welcome back to the wet, windy and cool uh, midwinter flower farm. Thanks for joining in, thanks for watching. I thought I'd give a quick update and sorry about the wind, the sound quality might be affected. But I'll just give you a quick update of what we're doing. Um, we're picking through our jobs slowly over winter, trying to get a few things done. It's been really wet. Uh, which is a bit limiting as you can see there's quite a bit of water standing around which makes it quite muddy we've added um, some lillium bulbs to the garden and I'll show you what we've planted and we're also trying to put cardboard down and add mulch in the pathways so it's six degrees today which is not too bad and Gardeners have got to do what gardeners have got to do. You've got to get out there while it's not raining. It is drizzly today uh, and get things done. I'm not complaining at all. I know there's a lot of people in different areas that can't even work their soil during winter. So always thankful that we can still get out and get things done. It's a good time of the year to cut things back and tidy things up and get rid of rubbish and do those sorts of things. So thank you for those who've recently subscribed. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll show you what we've been up to. I just wanted to show you the size of Lillian bulbs that I ordered. These are the 12 to 14 size. I think that's a diameter size. So they're quite large. So hopefully I will get a um, flower spike in the first year. And then the idea will be to divide them up uh, every three years and either sell them or replant them. So as you can see, it's pretty wet and muddy. We've got to sort of drain these pathways um, and then we can mulch them. So these end beds we've planted up with lilliums. So there's a range of lilliums in here. There's some LA hybrids, um, some Asiatic crosses. I'll tell you what we've got. There's a LA hybrid Nashville. There's a child in time and a hotel California and up the end is my sweet pea climbing frame which my husband made and I hope to mirror that on the other side with another frame. It really is yucky out here today but you've got to get in and garden while you can. So this bed is nearly full. I've got a few more lilliums on their way. So I planted about 500 lilliums in these two spaces here and this one's another LA hybrid Forza Red and it's a must see a double lilium in that side. We've also been clearing out this space up here. I don't know if you recall but last time this area there was a big caravan and we had the sheep eating out the grass so the sheep have done a good job of that. They've been transferred to their new paddock, their new project of eating that out. So in the meantime, we will clean this area up. And my plan is to put in a perennial type bed here, cover up that fence and plant a range of shrubs. So just a work in progress of cleaning all that getting rid of some rubbish and sorting that out. So we are a working farm. There's a lot of stuff, for lack of a better word, laying around that we have to clean up. And um, we'll get through that and make this area a little bit more presentable than it currently is. So in as the entrance to the flower farm, we've got these raised beds that we've made. Um, and in them is a range of different veg. So there's two beds here full of, of garlic. The end bed we'll plant out with leeks. And I've also had an opportunity to plant out all my onion seedlings, which I grew from seed. It might be a bit hard to see on camera, but this is the brown onions and then I've got a bed with red. So all my daffodil bulbs now have started to come up. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I hate wasting the space between the daffodils and the bulbs. Um, and I hate dedicating the whole bed to bulbs. 
So I decided to um, just sow some nigella seeds in where the daffodils are. So they'll come up hopefully and flower while the daffodils are flowering or a little bit after the daffodils. Um, and they're not, they don't take up too much space. So I thought that would be a good fit. I've also got some little um, granny's bonnets on the end between the Dutch irises and the daffodils. Um, maybe then after the daffodils die down, I think I'll put some cosmos on top. Um, I think with limited bed space, you have to sort of be creative in what you do and what you plant. So I think the only plants that have suffered a little bit with frost damage would have to be the straw flowers. You can see that they're a little bit burnt on top. Um, I, we've had some big frosts this year. I think in Bathurst they got down to minus nine degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold. Um, I don't believe we've gotten down that far here. Although we're high, we're about 960 meters above sea level. Um, I, I think a minus six is probably the coldest that we've had so far. Bathurst is in a bit of a valley, but it's, it's certainly been, we've had some cold weather this year. No snow yet. So that rubbish there, that's just cardboard that we lay down in the paths um, before we mulch them. Um, and the stock, well, they're persisting. They keep flowering, so I keep picking them and just bringing them inside. They do smell amazing. I had three stock flowers in the, the living room the other day and you can smell them throughout the house. So they certainly make an impact. So in this bed here, I had some Linaria, some Northern Lights, and it was quite a cute little flower, but it wasn't tall enough. So I decided to pull it out and I've planted other things in here. Um, but I've also planted my Ranunculus, which I couldn't see any evidence of, but I've just noticed here, it's starting to sprout. And I just dug one up just to have a look. And you can see there's some little root hairs on there. Um, we do have rather a long um, spring, so I'm not worried about it being a little bit late. I've got some others in the garden that have already come up, but um, these are a, these are a nice red uh, maroon colour, so I was hoping to have these as well. So our lucky lawnmowers over here also have a dual purpose. Their job is also to help train Meg, our new uh, work dog. And because they're nice and quiet and they're not particularly scared of dogs, they're good to use um, as a training tool for the new pup. with the sheep this is her first run and the kelpie will naturally want to bring the sheep to you you also want to make sure you don't scare the pup 